take you guys all the way over there and all the way up here. Got to get my summoners up here to try to protect these guys. Keep them coming, guys.
Search. Let's get that.
right, so I just need to get up top here. Wait, that place does not have much for food. Survive invasion and kill everybody. Oh. Alright, we can do that. I thought I was just gonna win as soon as I got him over there, but. Ooh, Lord of Skulls is down here. Well, I guess I'll be able to beat that this turn, too. Or this playthrough, probably. Whoa, 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 whoa. 
think that was, yeah, that's what I thought. Damn, we almost took him out. Nope. Yeah. He got the kill, so I did not get the objective.
Oh, he does have another base. Well then, kill that.
He did have another base over there. I wasn't sure. Alright, let's see what the quests were on this one. Corpses for the Corpse God. In your 10,000 years of war, you do not remember a worse sojourn in the warp. Following Abaddon's 13th Black Crusade in the days after the fall of Cadia, your cruiser jumped into the warp and became stuck there like a wasp in amber. <clears throat> Time became unreliable. Your crew and ship itself became infested with the stuff of the warp, possessed or mutated until only a handful of your troops remained intact. Until the cruiser finally burst from the warp above the Imperial world of Gladius Prime, it was a demon ship and your surviving troops fled to the planet below. After so many millennia, though, you know that there is purpose to this. You have been tested and survived. You know that the Dark Gods had reason to send your warband to Gladius Prime and that you must discover it or face their wrath. To a weaker eye, the planet would look devastated. With its imperial populace demoralized to you, it looks ripe for corruption. You start immediately. And we got our cultists, and research it bloated. And that gave us some chaos bonds as a reward. Given your labors, the chaos bond was hardly the blessing you'd hoped for. The writhing beast was once your master of executions. Now he, it, has chained to your is chained in your compound, a twisted wreck that barely survives the mutations, tearing it apart and reforming it from moment to moment. Your companion's mind is gone from its many mouths, however, he gibbers prophecy, the thousandth sword, the circuit completed, the gods in accord, infinity infested, your cultists interpret it words, its words to warn of the imperial attack, but in its wake, revelation. Survive the invasion and kill all invi uh, invaders. The bound demon can nailed to your throne, howl to herald an arrival. Into your chamber strides the shifting Enoch, your master of possession. His familiars have been whispering since arriving on the planet and now talk of a great purpose for the planet. For any lord with the power to take it, please. The four gods hiss. Enoch's many voices, and they will make this planet a fit home for a demon prince. This planet is, in some sense, you don't bother to comprehend alive. With the aid of Enoch and the guidance of the gods, you shall take it and hopefully ascend to demonhood yourself. The Rites of Zinch There are no mirrors in your chambers. When the gods first blessed you with mutation, you shattered them all in your pride, but you have let the frames remain to remind you of what you have become. As you sit alone pondering Enoch's untrustworthy words, the empty frames fill a fleshy eye of Zinch, repeated, repeating endlessly, spilling triprophobic into the plasteel walls. Soon you are observed from every wall by the god's blinking icon made flesh. You summon your aspirant sorcerer. She performs rituals in front of the eyes, minor sacrifices, 
whispers secrets to them and listens as the eyelashes whisper together in a language only she understands. She claims that the god demands tribute to you. That you must learn better to change. Research the right of change, invoke the right of change in the city. And we got the magnet scroll. Your sorcerer returns more twisted than before. She says that the fate weaver has spoken to her oracler as ever. For now, she feels you are overstepping yourself and that you should honor Zinch with sacrifices simple and complex. Overstepping yourself? How dare she? You narrow your eyes knowing that who that first sacrifice should be. Use cultist sacrifice with cults, chaos cultists. And we got research. Your finger, you finger her eye sockets idly. The sorcerer served her purpose well. Even if she was an unwilling sacrifice, you hope Zinch enjoys the savior of the soul of one of his own. Her skull chatters to life in your gauntlet hand and whispers in the changer's voice. Your defiance is intriguing. This planet has a heart. We must change its beat for our own. You smile while you crush the skull. This is a good start. The Sacrament of Nurgle. The Master of Possession is announced at your chambers again. Enoch enters unhelmeted, and even he seems momentarily set back by the eyes staring from the walls. The shattered skull in your hand, you relay Zinch's message, and he smiles. Sly. Excellent. One god on side. One god on side, my lord. As far as the changer can be trusted. He peers closely at the blinking wall eyes. Our next prospect is more. Avuncular? Hmm. And more obvious in his desires. All we need to do is spread disease in his name and we shall surely acquire his blessing. And I suddenly reveals an inch long teeth and snaps at him before he crushes it with a fist. You dismiss him, commanding your cultists to perform the rituals of Nurgle. Soon you hear the walls from the city al you hear the wails from the city altars. Soon flies begin to land on the eyes around you, laying A's between the frantically fluttering lashes. And that's when we research Nurgle, use the mark of Nurgle, and accumulated a population. We got blight grenades. The city heaves with tight-packed life, ideal for disease to spread. And your troops are already infected with Nurgle's blight. Stalk the streets like tallymen. Before nightfall, a pandemic rocks the city. Those who survive will always bear Nurgle's blessing. As you lie, yourself feverish with a godsend malady, the fly-eaten eyes around you open like ragged mouse. A hundred throatless voices gurgle or giggle a command. Infect the swarm god. Spread disease even to the children of the great devourer. To, and receive my blessing. Defeat the enemy camp. Got a hundred food. You climb the corpses of Tyranid Megafauna. Such fools the loyalists are to fear these single soul beasts. They die. They rot like anything else. In the twitching heart of a flesh building you see the mark of Nurgle bloated purple flies leave the ventricle walls and gather closely around you a buzzing cloak you know you have his blessing the rituals of corn Enoch stands in your chamber when you return accompanied by a figure wreathed in technology they they're inspecting the eye wall rotted and infected as it is before the new figure even turns, its me mecha tendrils and weapons are all aimed at you. A warpsmith, then. Enoch speaks, two gods on side. The simplest challenge is next. All he wants is, well, you know. He gestures to the wall where the pestilent eyes are beginning, are already bleeding. They start gushing, flooding. Quickly the chamber is filling. The demon can at your throne panic as the blood rises. The blood is green. The warpsmith speaks blood. 1F5429, not 67080B. Corn. 
110010 fight orcs located gives you the location orc blood isn't green you know you've killed enough but you can see the reasoning you order Enoch to start the rites of corn and the warpsmith pre to prepare his machines for war and we use the right of blood and we evoke the right of blood on a city and we got the X you have come to see what new horrors the Dark Mechanicum has created. Ahead of the assault on the orcs, instead the warpsmith seems intent on giving you the tour of his infernal fabricator. His flat machine tongue explains of what should be unholy horrors frustrate and bore you. After he's proudly presented the third identical soul rending, and demon and trap station. You grab him by the fusion, by his fusion claws, and crush him close. I do not care, you bellow. Corn doesn't care. Nurgle doesn't care. No one cares. The greenskins must die. Build more demon engines, or he nods implacable, and strides off on his mecha tendrils. Soon you will have the force to crush the greenskins. Produce a unit with a demon trait. Four. Got energy. The warpsmith has worked hard to help with help from the master possession. The unholy ritual, infernal contracts, and the lives of many slaves. He has produced serried ranks of half demon, half machine monstrosities to crush the green skins into a bloody paste. For the Lord of Skull's pleasure, you order the assault, defeat the camp. Got some more. The retinue stands on the escarpment overlooking the orc camp. The demon en engines are still happily stalking the few greenskins who aren't dead or disabled. Everywhere else is blood pooled in, a f in the fighting pits and drops. The orc chief is still trying to crawl towards you, even with his limbs removed. They really are rather resilient. You sigh, reach down, and hack his head off. It carries on trying to bite at your ankles until Enoch kicks it into the pool of blood. As the orc head sinks, yelling incoherent threats, a demonic mouth forms out of the gore, swallows it, and bellows blood for the blood god before collapsing. Corn, it appears, approves. The Liturgy of Slanesh do you fear walking back into your chambers? Perhaps the gods are playing with you, not choosing you for ascension. No, you are a chaos lord, and you have no choice but to go on. To step backwards is to demand spawnhood like the master of executions that said Enoch accompanies you in. You step in the room. The hall is long and quiet. The eyes are quivering but shut. The floor is clear of blood and pus, but even your horrid demon can seem intact, purring. It's all too calm. Then you see why a demon sits on your throne. Your heart catches, beauty personified, alabaster skin, iridescent chitin, eyes faceted like jewels. You struggle for control at its scent. Lick dry lips. Lick dry lips at the erotic curve of its impossibly impossible claws. As you struggle with yourself, the wall eyed peeled the wall eyes peel open and distorted tongues, limbs, and organs emerge, straining for your touch. Little Lord, you want Slanesh's blessing, little Lord? Purrs the enrapturous. Come, your task is simple. Teach the machines. Teach them to suffer and to love. Enoch groans in ecstasy, and you turn in silence to silence him with a growl. When you turn back, the room is empty once more. You slump on your skull and crusted throne and order the rites of Slanesh to begin. And that's what we did. And we got the tantalizing icon. Outside your denuded chamber. The city groans in midnight ecstasy. The Lord of Access, she who thirsts, owns it tonight. Every form of depravity, even torture, every transgression happens in the city streets. 
your dreams are troubled, delighted. In the morning, you find a gift at the door, and the warpsmith waiting, untouched by l the lust and horror, with coordinates of a Necron tomb. Defeat the orc camp or the enemy camp, get a hundred energy. You are not sure whether you taught the Necrons to love, but you certainly taught them suffering. Trap their soulless bodies from escape, experimenting with tortures and horrors, watching the warpsmith cutting their flesh metal open to hyperstimulate their pleasure centers. Before this day, you wouldn't have said you could make a Necron suffer like this. You couldn't drive a Necron mad with lust. You feel a heavy crustacean-like claw on your shoulder and a rush of lust. And the sultry voice whispers into your congratulations, little one, little lord. Chapter 6 A True Demon World. The preparations are made. The gods have all signaled their favor, and not just on the walls of your chamber. Now comes the moment. You invoke the favor of each god in turn Korn, Zinch, Nurgle, and Slanesh. Across the surface of the planet, a great sigil of chaos is drawn by their unholy power encompassing the infinity circuit of the planet's core. The final stage is to pour the spirit of a true demon into the machinery. Enoch's whittling and, whittling and the gods' blessings have secured you the service of an ancient demon prince. He is at the center of the star. The folk, he is the center of the star, the focus upon which the warpsmith and the master position, possession will work. Unwilling but compelled by the gods, he aids you. Visit the highlighted tile with the demon prince. Now the ritual begins in earnest. The master possession and the warpsmith know what to do. The warpsmith's anarchy, arcane machinery attunes itself to the planet's pylons and circuits, whilst Enoch orders cultists to each point of the star. Through your blood and brute worship, you will complete the ritual and infest the Old One's ancient defenses. Finally, the fools of the Imperium will wake to your presence, but are they too late? Sacrifice the cultists at those three locations. Oh, sacrifice cast cultists within ten turns. Survive the invasion and kill all invaders. Keep the demon priest alive. Victory. Everything happens at once. Enoch's wry face collapses into dust even as he invokes the gods, the warp swallows the demon prince purple flames immolate the praying cultist and the warpsmith is pulled into his arcane machinery gibbering ones and zeros only you survive be calm than the storm failure the eternal torment is a moment away but after ten thousand years of striving and horror you feel the gods touch upon you the dark wings sprout from your back your limbs grow monstrous you are a newborn demon prince of chaos undivided howling your birth to the dying world. Your freedom lasts but a second. The ritual drags you into the planet's core, consuming the ancient spirits hiding there. You are the planet now, a true demon world. Your unholy presence pulls it and its billion surviving souls into the warp. There, you will torment them eternally. Gladius Prime lives. Its continental skin shudders, its raystone innards creak. Whatever secrets or stored spirits previously existed in its infinity circuits are gone. They have been fed to the spirit of this new being, a demon engine in the scale of a planet. Already the world is shifting, merging to the warp storm surrounding it, the realm of chaos itself. Soon Gladius Prime will be a demon planet like no other. All right, so there we go. We got the highest score overall here uh, without the AI getting massive bonuses. Economy. Yeah, pretty high. Got that bonus at the end. The Elder were doing pretty good. Military. We were all pretty good until here and then I just really exponentially got out of control. Research. Yeah, definitely lagged behind on the research. 
These guys completed their research, so there was nothing left for them to research. Got 99 creatures. Yeah, see, they. The most was 142 with my ally. Everybody else was fairly basic without those massive bonuses that they get. So. Um, with everything being neutral, I felt that this was a little too easy. Um, definitely the end there where my demon prince was getting attacked. I was a little worried I was going to lose that. So uh, that was actually the hardest part out of everything. But otherwise, the demon spawn, especially getting all those boons, really made him quite powerful. Um, I was actually pretty satisfied with how the we went through and played this. If anything, I'd probably go back and maybe focus on the boons just to keep boosting my chaos spawn going, get them all those extra bonuses, but use a, the warp uh, priest to be able to increase your economy with the ore and the energy. That was huge. The chaos lords definitely do a lot of damage. If you're fighting a lot of melee, you could use the uh, blood to reflect damage back to them, but for the most part we were getting shot up, so it didn't do a whole lot there. And then obviously the uh, Lord of Possession, those were incredibly uh, important for our push, especially early on, just getting those kills, getting all those demon spawns running around, and then using their melee, and starting at level 4 with the levels, um, they were able to overwhelm the units, so that was pretty good. Uh, Land Raiders obviously are very good give you some nice range later on the defilers if you're using the melee um, the obliterators were also very very helpful so it's kind of like terminators except with also very powerful range so they don't take much of a hit but they could definitely keep going yeah with all these bonuses you can really make them survive quite a bit you can double your icons to get additional bonuses. Yeah, I never even got the extra vehicle armor. That was a mistake. The Hell Drakes are very powerful as well. Venom Crawler. Consumes the souls of its enemies to restore hit points. Oh, so it can keep surviving. Havoc Launcher. Oh, see, that was a whole other attack I didn't even get, so I should have done that. Mahler Fiend, bombs. That could have been useful since the Hell Brute, Havix, Crack Grenades. Yeah, see, those would have given them some grenades. That probably would have been helpful to boost up my guys, but otherwise, everything else was fairly reasonable. So, I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, please give my channel a like and subscribe. It encourages me to post more content for you. Have a great day.